In this video series, we're going to be looking at rotating systems, and in particular, we're going to be using the conservation of energy in order to determine different parameters within that system. Now, in this first example, we have a pin-ended rod, and that pin-ended rod has been lifted and rotated about an angle theta. Now, what we want to find out is when we let go of that rod and it swings back past the vertical position, we want to know what the velocity is at the tip of the rod. So as this swings past the vertical, we want to know the linear velocity of the tip as it passes our vertical position here. So essentially what we have is a conservation of energy problem because when we lift the rod or when we rotate the rod, we give it potential energy. We're lifting it against gravity. So it's going to have potential energy. And when we release the rod, it's going to gain kinetic energy. And in fact, the potential energy is going to be converted to kinetic energy as the pin-ended rod falls back towards its original position. So therefore, we have potential energy equals kinetic energy. We have an energy conversion or conservation of energy. But I'm just going to specify here that it's kinetic energy, but it's actually angular kinetic energy that we're interested in. And you'll see why in a moment. So we need to do a number of things. First of all, we need to determine the potential energy that's given to the rod when it's lifted or rotated. And then we need to determine the kinetic energy, which is going to be equal to the potential energy. And then from that angular kinetic energy, we can then determine the angular velocity of the rod as it passes the vertical position. And hence, we can determine the linear velocity at the tip. So first of all, let's take our equation, potential energy. And the formula for potential energy is mass times gravity times height. And the formula for angular kinetic energy is similar to linear kinetic energy, except it's a half. Instead of mass, we have moment of inertia, so a half i. And instead of linear velocity squared, we have angular velocity squared. So we know the mass of our rod and we know gravity, but at the moment we don't know what height h the rod is being raised by. Now what we need to consider is the change of height of the centre of mass of the rod. And the centre of mass of the rod is at the centre of the rod here. Now because we have a given angle, we can actually use trigonometry to determine the change in height. So when the rod was in its resting position, its centre of mass would have been somewhere around here. And then when the rod's been rotated, we can see that the centre of mass has gone up by this distance here. This distance here is the value of h that we're trying to find. Now we're going to need to do this in a couple of steps. First of all, we're going to need to determine this distance here using trig. And I'm going to call this distance d. And we already know that the distance from the pin to the original centre of mass, this distance here, is half the length, l over 2. Because it's the distance to the centre of the rod. So we're going to work out d. And then we can calculate h by doing l over 2 minus d. Now the way that we're going to find the distance d is by using trigonometry, because what we have here is a right angle triangle. It goes down here, goes across, and then back to the pin like so. We know the angle is 42 degrees, and we also know the hypotenuse of that triangle, this distance here. Because once again, that's the distance between the pin and the centre of the rod. So that distance is also L over 2. Now from trigonometry, we know that cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. OK, now rearranging that to make A the subject, all we need to do is multiply each side by H. So we get A equals H cos theta. Now if we refer to the triangle that we've drawn, we can see that opposite the angle is this length here, and therefore the adjacent on the triangle is this length here, the length that we're trying to find, d. And the hypotenuse is the length over 2, or l over 2. I'm just going to remove the o and the a to avoid any confusion, but we know that we're trying to calculate the length of the adjacent. So the adjacent is d, and d equals the hypotenuse, which is l over 2, times cos of the angle. 
Well, we know that the length is 1.25 meters, so we have 1.25 over 2 for L over 2, and we know that the angle is 42 degrees. When we run that through the calculator, we get an answer of 0 0.464. And that's in meters. Now, although I've written 0 0.464, I'm going to keep my full calculator answer for the next step. Because if you recall, what we're actually trying to find is h, the change in height of the center of mass. And we can see from our diagram that h is just L over 2, the distance to the center, minus the distance d that we've just calculated. Now, once again, we can plug in some values because L is 1.25 over 2 minus 0.464. But once again, I'm going to use the full calculator answer there. So I have 1.25 over 2 minus answer, which gives 0 0.1605 to four decimal places. So h equals 0 0.1605 meters. OK, so if we refer to our original equation, we know the mass, we know gravity, and we know the change in height for the centre of mass. On the right-hand side, a half is a constant, and we're trying to find angular velocity so that we can then find linear velocity. There is another variable in here, then, that we need to calculate, and it's here. It's called the moment of inertia. Now, an easy way to think about moment of inertia is as a kind of rotational mass. And it really tells us about how the material is distributed away from the central axis. There's standard formulas for moment of inertia. And for a pin-ended rod, the formula is a third ml squared. So whenever we have a pin-ended rod, which is drawn as shown, the moment of inertia of that pin-ended rod is going to be a third mass times length squared. So let's plug in some values. We have a third times the mass of 28 kilograms, times the length squared, so 1.25 squared, which gives us a moment of inertia equal to 14.5833. And again, that's correct to four decimal places. Our units are kilogram meter squared. Okay, so let's make a note of our value for H and a note of our value for i, and then we can determine our angular velocity and our linear velocity. So returning to our original formula, we want to get omega on its own. We want to find the angular velocity. So the first thing that we need to do is multiply each side by 2, and then divide each side by i. Well, that will give us omega squared equals 2 m g h divided by i. Now just note that our left hand side here is omega squared, therefore square rooting each side we get omega equals the square root of 2 m g h divided by i. Now I'm just going to plug in the known values here, so we have omega equals the square root of 2 times 28, times gravity, which is 9.81, and times our height of 0 0.1605. And then all of that is being divided by our value of i of 14.5833. Just note that it's all of that that we're then square rooting. So running that through the calculator gives us a value of omega equal to 2.459. And omega is in rads per second. So the very last step then is to calculate our linear velocity. And we have a relatively straightforward formula for this. V equals r omega. It's one of our formulas for converting between linear and angular motion. But what we need to do is determine which radius we're going to use. 
We know the angular velocity of the rod is 2.459, but we don't yet know which radius to use. Now if we refer to our diagram, what we have is we have a rod that's pinned at the centre. And if we look carefully, we can see that its motion can be subscribed onto a circle. Now because it's the tip velocity that we need, we need the radius of the circle from the centre to the tip. So in actual fact what we're referring to here is the overall length of the rod, like so. So we can rewrite our formula to be L omega. Our length is 1.25 metres. Omega is 2.459 rads per second. Therefore our linear velocity, and this is the linear velocity at the tip of the rod, equals 3.074 meters per second, and that's accurate to three decimal places.